one day in the Amalfi Coast at the Hotel Amalfi. Two nights in Positano up at the villa couch surfing. So I had a really beautiful villa for couch surfing because he worked for the villas, so he was able to host people when he wasn't that busy. And the season in Italy is coming to an end because they don't work during the winter times. But during the high season, the touristy, they work from six to eight o'clock at night. Uh, very long, busy days. So two nights in Positano and four nights in um, Minori. So that's four, five, six, so seven. Seven nights in um, Southern Italy. And I slept on a bench in Salerno. So that's eight days, eight nights, because in Salerno, I was supposed to make my nighttime bus to Venice. And then my different couch surfing host goes, oh, you have to meet here, this plaza. Because most of the time they meet at that plaza, but mine didn't. Mine went to the next plaza, Plaza Montpellier. So it never came. So at 8.35 at night, my bus never came. A Flix bus is a good way to travel for cheap, but the people are not so friendly when you ask for advice. There's no one to ask. So they're like, no, no, it doesn't go to Venice. And they sort of shoo you off. So at nighttime, I was stranded. And I was too tired to look for a hostel, because I knew there was a hostel in every big city. But usually that takes miles. And I didn't want to walk miles. I was tired already. So I ended up just thinking, oh, well, I'll just sleep on the bench because it's pretty safe. There's nobody around. It's by the ocean. But it was really cold at night. So I was really, really cold until maybe two, oh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke up. My back hurt. And I decided I'm going to look for a bathroom. That's why I woke up, to look for a bathroom. So I woke up. Then I go, you know, I can't sleep on this bench anymore. It was just too cold. I didn't have the winter clothes. So from now on, when I travel, I'm going to bring a sleeping bag. So anywhere I go, I'm super warm. So even though it's going to take up extra space, I think a sleeping bag is just a good emergency item for me to have. So guess what? Across the street, I found a bar cafe open all night. So the first thing I ordered was a coffee because I was freezing. And then I started ordering a food and Prosecco. So I ended up just staying there all night and they didn't care. Then I used the restroom. They had plugs so I can charge my phone. So um, then I explained to them what happened and they're like, oh, that sucks. I even fell asleep for a few hours on their table and they didn't care because I'm a paying customer. So I wake up early. Oh, the reason why I needed Wi-Fi, very important. I had Wi-Fi, but I needed Wi-Fi battery charge. So it's either you have Wi-Fi, or you have battery charge, or you have one or the other, but usually battery life doesn't last that long. So I needed to look up how I'm gonna get to Venice the next day, because I wanted to get to Venice by my birthday, and I had one day, one and a half days to get there. So I started looking at buses, and trains, and even though trains was a little bit more expensive, I got there a lot faster, so I saved half a day. So I decided just to book the train and um, not take the bus. So that's what I did, so I booked it online, so everything was booked for me, ready to go, and I was leaving at 8.59 oh, on the train, so I slowly walked my way to the train station. And that night in Salerno, I was doing couch surfing hangouts. So two guys go, come here, we'll find you a solution. And they're from couch surfing. I probably could have slept at their house in an emergency, but I just didn't feel, well, I was already angry about missing the bus. So if they pissed me off in any way, I think I'll just like yell at them. So I wasn't in a fun, happy mood to meet anyone. And they seemed like jerks. Sometimes I just get, um, intuition, intuitive feelings about people and things. So I decided not to meet them. I was going to at first, but I just didn't have a good feeling about it. So I thought it's just best that I avoid all people and sleep on the bench. So that's a good, um, good lesson for me again, because now that I'm older, I'm still sleeping on benches and stuff sometimes. Sometimes when you're traveling, you never know where you're going to end up. So you have to be very flexible, very open, and just 
happy that you're traveling instead of being mad and upset that one plan didn't work, like missing my bus that I already paid for. It's just part of traveling. So I spent um, three nights in Venice. I was planning on going to Tuscany, but I spent so much time in the uh, south of Italy. I only had three days in Venice. And Tuscany, I don't know if the drive is stick shift, and for me to rent an uh, automatic would be a lot more expensive, and I drink a lot. It didn't make sense for me to be driving around the countryside drunk. So I didn't go to Tuscany. And it's hard to get to wineries if you don't have a car. So I decided to stay in Venice. And I'm happy I did because Venice is so beautiful. So many alleyways, so many places to get lost. But one thing about Venice, it's so cold. There's nine degrees Celsius. So that's like what? 50 something degrees Fahrenheit. So I didn't have, I only wore like have summer clothes. So I was really, really cold. But I had a great time. I um, met a few couch surfing hangouts that I hung out with, which is super nice. Because when I'm alone traveling, I like to meet other people. And Top Surfing Hangout, Hangout is an app where they show you how many people are hanging out within your vicinity and who wants to meet you. And you say you want to meet them too, so you guys just talk about where to meet. And a lot of times they just hang out for the afternoon or the day or even two days if you guys get along. So I do that a lot, hang out. So a lot of Americans think I'm going to get raped and murdered on Couchsurfing. It's Couchsurfing.org. It's an organization all over the world that travelers or like-minded people like myself have traveled in the past or love traveling and now that they have to go to work they still want to meet travelers. So they're so busy they like people coming in from all over the world to tell them about the travels, about where they live, and it's a great way to meet people and it's an exchange. So what you do is called couch surfing, is that you're able to stay at their house either on the couch, get it, couch surfing, or if they have a pull out mattress on the floor, or sometimes they have um, extra rooms, so they let you sleep for free at their house. So that's what I do a lot, couch surfing, and it's all free. They can't ask you for money, and a lot of times when they have time, they take you around the city or wherever they live to give you a tour or they hang out with you. A lot of times they cook for you or you cook for them too when they're working. For me, it's hard to make Vietnamese food because it's hard to find the ingredients. So now, whatever money I save on a uh, room, I take me and my host out to eat or buy wine, food, and exchange. So I've been doing that for the last 10 years when I travel and I love it. So. You get a free place to stay, and I've gotten place, great places to stay. Just now in Positano, I got to stay in a bed and breakfast villa with five rooms that people actually rent for like 100 euros. And I got to stay with the host in his um, room apartment with a pull-out bed. And a lot of times he gives his bed because he wakes up early in the morning and he doesn't want to wake people up. Um, so I got that. Beautiful place, like very local, oh, great views. One of the highest villas in Positano, overlooking all the views. Um, the next place I got was a two-story, very charming house in the heart of Minori. I had two choices to spend the night uh, um, sleep, downstairs, and it's a queen-size pull-out bed, or upstairs another queen size in my own room, shared bathroom. Um, and in Venice, he had two extra bedrooms with a king size bed and shared bathroom, but um, all uh, much bigger than I could afford at a hostel or an, a, a hotel. Even hotels that were like 78 to $100, you don't get big beds like this. And they let you use a facility, they leave the door open for you, or they give you the keys. So I'm getting like a king-size bed, kitchen, 
and a lot of the hosts are working full time. So they're gone by 6 or 8 o'clock in the morning. So you get the whole apartment to yourself if you want it. And they don't come back until 8 o'clock. So usually I try to meet up with them for dinner. And a lot of them, they're too tired to go eat dinner. So we end up at their um, kitchen eating homemade pasta. Not homemade pasta. Like, um, they're cooking me homemade Italian dishes that I would never think of making. But so delicious, yummier than even the restaurant. I don't even eat pasta at the restaurant. They eat a lot of protein, meat, and fish. But when they cook, it's delicious. I had a pumpkin risotto so, out of pumpkins. So simple and so good. And I got the recipe for that, and I watched them make food. And we become good friends. And it's just a great way for me to save money. But also, more important is to meet locals where it's in a safer environment because help surfing I'm sure has some crimes but they record everything with all the emails so if someone said it wants to rape or murder you they probably wouldn't do it on the app they would probably meet you at the bar or follow you home but I'm not really too afraid of that but I think Americans are too paranoid about people wanting to kill them because as a culture Americans watch the media, and the media is full of violence, crimes, hate, war. So they feel that, and they believe in the propaganda, like they feel that everywhere they go, someone's just waiting to kill them. But the world's actually a very friendlier, safer place from what i found, because I'm still alive. And I camp out in the bushes, I hitchhike, I mean, you have to be very careful with what you're doing. You have to be aware of your surroundings. But people over are very friendly and helpful. And most people don't really want to kill you. It's just they don't. And if they do, then you're going to have to fight back, I guess. But I don't let that stop me from living life to the fullest and traveling. So my experiences with couch surfing, two thumbs up. And a lot of females are afraid of traveling by themselves first off, but couch surfing? No, it's a lot safer than just um, hanging out by yourself, eating at the bar and stuff. Um, I love it. I highly recommend it. But of course, in all things, use your brain. Don't get super drunk. Don't just be trusting everyone. You just have to always use your intuition when traveling and have a sense of awareness. Because um, nowadays, yes, a lot of people are using uh, couch surfing sort of like a Tinder to meet people romantically. Ten years ago, this didn't really happen as much, but it's the age in, li in which we live. But as long as you know that, and if someone tries to flirt with you or make a pass, be an adult and say no. Or and a lot of females use it the same way. So it's double standards a lot of times. So you can say no politely and still be friends. That's how. It was in Italy, and I'm fine with that. Because as long as you a bug, can only try, and then people go no, then you both move on. No big deal. It's not like anyone's going to force you, or if they're persistent, then you leave. That's just it. So I highly recommend couch surfing, even at my age, because it's more for younger people. Nowadays, there's a lot old, older people for couch surfing. So highly recommended. So the how many days did I capture for seven? Seven. Uh, After that, I want you to talk about that thing right there. The first day you wear that one. Oh, okay. Okay. When you wear that, you put your leg on up there, and um, one a sock in your leg, and one from your your feet, and one everything. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Uh, uh, so the capture thing. I didn't pay for one, two, six, seven, nine days. So nine days of, oh, and then 10 days of sleeping in the bench. But nine days, I didn't pay for a hostel, for a room, Airbnb, or anything. So, couch surfing. Talk about eating too. Oh, eating? Okay. Talk about that one, and where do you eat? And then where do you find oh. food, and something like that? That's a so, good one, okay? So I have a lot of pictures eating. <laughs> that I saved so much money on a hostel room and Airbnb or a room, I spent all that money on eating better food. 
So I ate a lot of uh, Michelin, not rated restaurants, but almost Michelin rated restaurants, where it's very, it's, uh, very great reviews. I don't remember the names of it right now, but I have pictures. So my uncle would be putting the pictures in with the videos, and I take pictures. I don't really take pictures of myself eating. I just look like a fat pig. Nobody wants to see that. A lock up and with your up the drinking. Oh, and of course, everywhere I go, I'm drinking table wine or local wine. That's the cheapest, but so delicious. I don't need to drink better wine than table wine. So it could be seven euros for a carafe, half a liter. That's cheap. And I'm drinking Prosecco. It's three to five to seven euros a glass. And that's very affordable for Italy. And the food in Italy is very affordable. Um, so all the money I'm saving, um, I ate rabbit at this very beautiful hotel restaurant. So delicious, 28 euros, which is really good price compared to America.